The electronics are arguably the most important part about a combat robot, and they also can be the most daunting for a new builder, so I decided to put this guide together explaining the ins and outs of the specific components as well as how to wire them together. These will apply to any weight class of robot, but I also decided to throw in some specific product recommendations that are specific to ant weight robots, one pound robots. Uh, these came from not just me, but they came from one of the best builders in the Midwest, Remy of Team YO. He put a guide together in the MRCA discords. I decided to put it into this video to make the decision making process for new builders a lot easier. None of the products I mentioned in this video are sponsored or affiliates in any way, so I don't get any money if you buy these things, and as always, links are in the description. Let's start out by just showing the wiring diagrams for the two most common ways you'll see the wiring set up. One with a servo as a weapon and the other with a brushless spinner as the weapon. The components consist of a receiver, a drive ESC, battery, switch, two drive motors, and a servo in the one, one version and a brushless motor with a brushless ESC in the other. We'll also talk about BECs and the transmitter. As far as transmitters go, the Flysky FSI6S is gonna be your best bet. Um, it's pretty much the cheapest you can get with the amount of features it has. If you try to go cheaper, you're gonna be missing out on a lot of features and you're gonna end up outgrowing it pretty quickly. Uh, the transmitter communicates to the receiver and then res and uses signals to communicate to the rest of the robot on what to do through different channels. Uh, typically the channels on the receiver have three pins, one for voltage, one for ground, and one for the actual signal. While this comes with its own receiver, the FS2A receiver is gonna be a lot better option for you since it is a lot smaller and it's gonna save on weight and space, which is really important in a one pound robot. The next part I wanna talk about is the drive ESC. An ESC or electronic speed controller is designed to control the speed of motors, in this case, the drive motors. Most combat robotics drive ESCs come with a five volt BEC or battery elimination circuit. This controls the voltage going to the receiver so you don't burn it out with the full voltage of the battery. The recommended drive ESC for ant weights is the Repeat Robotics Dual Brushed. This comes with a optional onboard mixing. Mixing essentially allows you to control the drive of the robot with just the right stick of the controller. The nice thing about this ESC is that it is one ESC for both drive sides. Um, there's situations I think mostly in larger robots where you have an ESC for each drive side. Also, not every ESC has its own built-in BEC, so keep that in mind if you're using something else. Um, the diagrams I have in this video for the whole robot are assuming you're using this ESC or something like that, so just keep that in mind if you're using something else. So as far as wiring up this ESC goes, the single yellow wire goes to the channel 1 signal pin, while the three pin connector goes to channel two with white being the signal. The two thicker wires on that side goes to the voltage, while the two pair of red and black wires on the other side goes to each drive side. I also want to throw in that the Malinky Nano HV is another good option for ants. It has the ESC and the receiver all in one package, so it's a lot simpler, lighter, and compact though it also requires more soldering and is more expensive. These two wires go from the ESC to the battery, but you'll want a switch between them, like this Fingertech one that will uses a screw to be able to turn on and off. This way the robot doesn't get turned off by accident in the middle of the fight. As far as batteries go, you're probably using a LiPo battery, which is standard among RC cars. I don't have a specific brand to recommend, but I will go over some specifications that are important for you to know. The number of cells determines the voltage of the battery. This is denoted by a number followed by the letter S. So a 2S is two cells. In a one pound robot, I'd say 2S and 3S is most common, although 4S is not unheard of. 
Uh, 2S is going to be mostly good for servo lifters since the servos operate at the same voltage those put out, while 3S is going to be more common if you're using a spinner. Also, if you have multiple components in your robot that need to operate at different voltages, so for example, Bigfoot has the servo operate at 8.4 volts while the drive motors operate at uh, 12.6. And in order to do that, I can use a 3S battery while having a BEC, which is a battery eliminator circuit mentioned before. But this is a separate one that is adjustable, which is the only way I know of in order to get a 8.4 volts out. The second characteristic I'll talk about is the milliamp hours, which is essentially the life of the battery. It is how much current it can put out for how long. For a ant weight servo lifter, 250 milliamp hours is going to be more than enough for a two minute match. If you have a spinner, then you're going to need a longer life battery. The last characteristic I'll talk about is the C value. This is essentially the max current output. For, it'll have a burst and continuous uh, burst. Think of that as the absolute highest amount of current that the battery can produce. And if you try to go above that, you'll experience brownouts. Uh, for continuous, that is essentially like more longer duration. If you go above that for too long, then you're also going to experience brownouts. The last thing you should keep in mind is the type of connector it has. Um, not that it's like one connector is better than the other so much that if you're using one battery and then you decide to switch batteries, it might have a different connector. So keep that in mind. Let's talk about drive motors. For your first robot, you're probably going to want to stick with brushed motors since they are less complicated and cheaper than brushless motors. And if you do decide to go brushless, keep in mind that you'll need a different drive ESC. Our ant weight recommendation is the Repeat Robotics Drive Brushed Mark II. They have pretty durable gearboxes and have a pretty good power output for their size. Otherwise, if you're picking out a drive motor and they have different options for the gearbox, a higher RPM gearbox is going to have a lower torque, while a lower RPM gearbox is going to have a higher torque. If you decide to have two motors on each side of the robot, you'll want to wire them in parallel. Just keep in mind that you'll need twice as much current on each side. And just a quick tip from me, I like to use connectors on my drive motors because resoldering the little connections on the motors can be a pain in the butt. It ends up costing a little bit of space and weight, but makes it a lot easier to replace them. Lastly, let's talk about weapon motors. 99% of weapon motors on a robot are either servos or brushless motors. We'll start with servos though, as far as product recommendations. Uh, most standard servos will fit in a one pound robot. Although if you want something smaller, uh, this one is what's used in Bigfoot. It works pretty well. Um, the only thing, my main criticism is the fact that it's a pain in the butt to find a servo horn for it. While standard servos, it's really easy. Um, servos are basically good for lifters, grabbers, self riders, or pretty much anything that you want it to move to a specific position. Because that's what makes a servo a servo. It just is given a signal. A PWN signal specifically and it, be, it tells it the motor to go to a specific position as opposed to other motors where it's a speed based thing. Servos consist of three wires, a voltage wire, ground wire, and a signal wire. Although you theoretically could just plug it into the receiver, that's not a good idea because you're only going to get five volts and odds are you're going to get want more than that. So you'll want to have just the signal wire going to the receiver and then the voltage wire going to the switch for, for the battery, and then the ground going to the ground, the common ground. In the near future, I wanna go into deeper depth with servos in combat robots, so subscribe if you wanna catch that. Lastly, we'll talk about brushless motors. These are gonna be used for any spinning weapon. So think of your vertical spinners, horizontal spinners, saws, and drills. They require ESCs in order to use. Uh, the three wires going from the motor to the ESC can be um, placed. There's not like a specific one they need to go in, but if it's not spinning in the correct direction, just swap any two wires and it'll switch to direction. 
as far as the wires going from the ESC to the everything else, the red wire goes to voltage, black goes to the ground, and then the other two go to the receiver. Just keep in mind that generally, if there's a white and black, the white one goes to the PWM signal. Considerations for ESCs and brushless motors. Keep in mind for the ESC, uh, the primary thing is the current that it's rated for and that you may want slightly more current than what it says because a lot of manufacturers might exaggerate or they're also spec to be on a drone which has a bunch of open air while combat robots are enclosed. The consideration I'm going to talk about with the motors is the KV or the RPM per volt. So a higher KV motor will spin faster. A higher KV motor also has a faster no load spin up time and a higher current draw. But a lower KV motor has a higher torque constant, which means it can achieve more torque at the same amount of current. But because the higher KV motors draw more current, it actually, there are situations in which a higher KV motor can have more torque than a lower KV motor. And also because of this, you'll have to keep in mind the uh, current current draw when you're choosing between different KVs of the same motor. I'm going to close out the video with some general quick tips before I get to that. Uh, be sure to comment down below what else you want me to make a guide on because I'm just sort of deciding to make guides based on what I think is useful and it would be really useful to get feedback from you guys. Okay, some tips before I close this out. Always double check your electronics, double check it when you get to the event before things get started and double check it between fights because connections can easily come loose. A way I prevent uh, my soldering connections from coming loose is to hot glue them. There's been a noticeable difference in how much that happens since I started doing that. Also, in you may want to insulate things more than you would in other RC things because a lot of combat robot robots are so compact that a lot of things are shoved together in ways they wouldn't normally be. And that might create shorting, which will create problems, obviously. And as obviously, this may seem obvious, but just check the voltage and current on every component uh, of your robot to make sure you're not giving certain components too much voltage or too much current. And make sure your motors are able to receive enough voltage and current. And lastly, down below, I put and some extra suppliers for electrical components for robots um, in addition to the links to the specific products I recommended in this video.